assessments for district um, and state and graduation. And just review some information here before we um, move into a scenario for documenting accommodations. So the bottom line is that we need to identify and figure out those assessments that are going to be given during this, the time frame of the student's IEP. Um, we do that, what grade are they in and kind of what assessments are being given during that time. And then we're gonna document any accommodations um, in that IEP. And so, um, you know, when a student participates in a district or a state level assessment, they need to receive the same accommodations that they get when they're participating in everyday types of classroom assessments. So kind of the mantra here is that you need, we want our kids to test in the same environment where they learn. So just because it's the MCA exam or just because it's the you know winter benchmarking fast bridge assessment, doesn't mean that we're going to layer in extra supports or things that are different in the student's IEP because it's, you know, kind of one of those unique situations we want to test in that environment where the student is learning and where they're kind of, um, you know, taking their other tests. So again, kind of things to think about in some examples here. Um, but the way that this works is those assess those accommodations get captured in the IEP. And then when it is time to engage in that assessment, um, you know, the state or uh, district assessment, the district assessment coordinator captures all of those um, accommodations and then they make sure that the that they're upheld. <clears throat> so for this particular video, we're going to be talking just about state assessments and um, the district ones are going to be in a separate one, but specifically talking about the MCA and then when the MCA maybe is not appropriate, if a student has a significant cognitive disability, then we'd be kind of determining if the MTAS might be the assessment that we want to provide. So um, listed here are the different subject areas and the grades at which the these state assessments are given. Um, and then I want to just take a moment to go through some information related to the MTAS assessment. So um, this resource is linked on the case manager resources website. It's also linked into SPED forms and an information icon, and I'll show you where that is in just a moment. Um, but it starts off um, with sort of those same kind of subject areas and the grade levels for testing. And what we're looking at here is um, is a student eligible? There are requirements for the MTAS. So it's not, you know, one of the a simple decision of, um, oh, well, I think the MCA would be too hard. So the student needs to take the MTAS. There are actually um, kind of criteria or things to consider when you're making that decision. And so what I just scrolled through is actually um, some like written information that I think is captured really cleanly in this flowchart. And so I wanted to just highlight some of the information in this flowchart because I think it's just a little bit easier to capture and understand. So um, the first of all, the IEP team has to discuss the appropriateness of the MCA with or without accommodations as a measure of the student's progress. So it starts with a conversation for every student about the MCA. And then we then the conversation goes into um, whether the IEP team determined that the student's cognitive disability prevents them from participating in the MCA. So really, when we talk MTAS, we're talking kids with cognitive disabilities. If a student doesn't have a cognitive disability, then they're not really eligible for the MCA. Um, and so if we're saying here, oh, well, they don't have a cognitive disability, um, then it's that you they're taking the MCA. So if you're still, however, working through, you know, what maybe constitutes the student taking the MTAS, um, has that cognitive disability, is it preventing them from taking the MCA? And if the answer is yes, then the next question is, are they receiving instruction that is linked to general education curriculum to the extent appropriate? So are they, you know, kind of working on some type of standards linked curriculum. If the answer is no, then the recommendation is to take a look at their goals, take a look at their program, and make sure that there is some type of instruction that is appropriate related to the general education. And it can be a very um, wide link. You know, maybe it's very, very basic, um, very, very pre-academic types of skills that would still kind of count as that general curriculum. 
So if it is linked to the general cur curriculum, is the student's cognitive functioning significantly below age expectations? So again, if it's not significantly below, so not, you know, two, three, maybe even four years delayed, then the student doesn't meet requirements for participation in the MTAS and this, the team needs to consider what accommodations might be needed for the MCA. Um, so again, we're talking about a very small kind of population of students that would meet these eligibility requirements for the MTAS. Um, so if the cognitive functioning is significantly below age expectation, does the disability have an impact on their ability to function in multiple environments? If the answer to that is yes, then do they need explicit and intensive instruction or extensive supports in multiple settings to acquire, maintain, and generalize academic and life skills? And if the answer to that is yes, then that student would be um, appropriately assessed by the MTAS instead of the MCA. So just point wanting to point out and work through that flow chart because I know that a lot of times um, that can be a little confusing. So now let's flip into SPED forms and take a look at what this looks like. So when we're actually going to be documenting, um, where, where do we go? So we would go into a student, into their IEP, and this is going to go on the assessments. We're talking about page one. So these uh, state level assessments, the MCA. And so um, this is where that eligibility for the MTAS is linked. So I'll just show you, it's the exact same document that we were just looking at, but just in case you're wondering, that's where it's linked. Um, and so then you're going to determine, um, is the student doing the MCA without accommodations? Are they doing the MCA with accommodations that are listed? And we'll, I'll show you how to document those. Um, or there aren't MCAs administered at the grade level that's covered by this IEP. So you can choose one of those. Um, and then for each, the reading, the math, or the science, depending on what um, grade level the student is at, you can choose then the accommodation. Um, and what you'll see here in the reading is I've got this um, text bubble that popped out. And the way that I got that was by just adding an accommodation. So for math, I could add the accommodation over here. And similarly, I could delete it as well. And that's kind of how that looks. The other thing that we need to do then is um, how those accommodations are representative of those used in the classroom. So again, we're going to be testing in the environment where the student learns. And so we don't want to just, you know, layer in a bunch of accommodations because this is a state level assessment. So when, if I open this drop down here, um, we could say that the student is going to be having some of these accommodations in presentation, um, and those are listed here, and or response, um, and you can add more than one. And then these are general supports. Um, so these are available to any student who needs them, but they're not considered like a true kind of standardized testing accommodation. Um, and so there's a big, big list here um, small group is one of them, individual. These are, again, these are general things that all students can have, but if your student needs that, we do need to be putting that into the IEP um, just for those documentation purposes. Um, one note about small group settings is, you know, again, if a student is taking and getting their instruction in the general education classroom um, and they don't take tests in a small group setting, then don't put it on, you don't have to put it on here for the MCA. Um, again, we're, we're wanting to focus on where is the student learning their information and then how can we, um, you know, work to get them accommodations or no accommodations if they don't really need them. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to go through a scenario here of a student and um, we're going to determine the assessments that this student needs for these statewide assessments. So I have one student here who is in third grade spends the majority of their day with their general education class. Um, they're pulled out for a portion of reading instruction and receive supplemental instruction for math. This student has an accommodation to test an acquired and quiet environment, but rarely uses it. And the IEP team considered removing the accommodation, but decided to wait and see how often he uses it over the next few months. So when I think about the statewide assessments, um, the first thing that I think of is based on what I learned about eligibility for the MTAS, the student I'm talking about is not eligible. Um, and the student that I'm also talking about has that, uh, that um, 
accommodation in his IEP for testing in a quiet environment, but they're not really using it. And so if I think about he's really getting most of his instruction in the general education classroom, um, I don't really think that this is a student that needs any accommodations for the MCA. So I'm actually going to um, delete this information. And um, there, so, sorry, the other thing that I probably should have called out is that um, the student is going to be taking an assessment um, because it's a third grade student, so they would be taking the reading and the math. So the science would, would not be applicable, but they're gonna be taking reading and math. Um, but for documenting on this particular student's IEP, the student is not gonna be taking, um, not gonna be needing any accommodations. Now, if it changes and the student starts using that quiet testing environment, I could go back and I could um, indicate that they're going to be needing um, that accommodation of acquired environment in reading and math, and I would just leave science blank. Now, the other thing that's on this page is the state assessments for English, English language proficiency. And so um, there is a decision tree that's linked in here um, that teams can go through if you have a student um, who is an English learner and is, you know, potentially needing to determine whether, you know, the, the access test is more appropriate for them. And so this is that flow chart that you can kind of work through that. Again, I'm not going to go through this in detail, but at least um, wanted to show you where that was linked if you are in a situation where that is what you're working through. 